Hey guys, what's up? It's me, this is the Conqueror. As you can see, I'm back from Yubicon, if you couldn't tell by the upload of <laughs> freaking corn and battle opera. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about day one of it. Day one, it really wasn't all that special. It was kind of mad because of the fact that I had to stand in a long line to get my pass. I didn't actually get my pass until 12 because I didn't pre-register. It started very, very late like when everything just started. And the fact that I had to sacrifice my past for, you know, another friend of mine since he wanted to do everything and his mother wanted him out of the house. So it was kind of mad. I did actually promote my stuff and all that stuff, you know, for about 10 or 20 people. Like I said, it was kind of mad. But I will say this, the game room, it was pretty hype. The fact that I actually did, you know, met a few pros like, oh my God, it's Andres and K Brad. Those are the only pros that I met at that night. And I also met Corn as well. <laughs> Corn was pretty hype. Especially footwork. You know how to he knows a good Dante. No kidding. But for me all I did was just either play Marvel or Skullgirls. And I basically had myself a reputation there for being one of the best Skullgirls players out there, even though I never was at that tournament. Well I was, I got 13. Never was strange so yeah kind of fucking, you know. Anyway, <laughs> after that, we just went to the, you know, to the raid. Most of, and then after that, we just went to the hotel room, stayed up until, what, five, I think. So yeah, day one, pretty man, but you know, still good. Day two, we decided to go to Kobo Hall. We didn't get to see Cobra Fur and, and all the other things, but I did get to meet the Nostalgia Critic or Doug Walker and then Kara. I promote my stuff to them. They say, you know, they don't have the time, but when they do, they will, you know, check it out. So, hey, I got the support of Doug Walker and Lynn Carr, and hopefully that guy with the glasses, hopefully they actually start supporting my stuff. And I also got myself a good client, professional, Imagine those Workshop. I said I was an animator, showed off my stuff. They said they want to work with me, so that's actually a good thing. I met them at the artist alley or the dealer's room, really. <laughs> I also get to promote a lot more that day because of the fact that I actually had the pass that I was supposed to have. So I went all around promoting my stuff. I also promoted myself to a few MLP fans since sooner or later, the pinky pie sprites that I want to use. I had to get in contact with the, um, you know, main sis about that. I want to do a dream match with Deadpool and Peaky Pie since everyone's been wanting it. And I said, if Deadpool or both of them somehow, you know, sell their differences or Deadpool wins, Deadpool and Pace saw with Deathstroke in the near future due to the fact that that's also been requested. But I think the reason why people was checking out my stuff is because Goku versus Superman because that got over 2k views which reminds me thank you very much for checking out the videos thank you very much for everything we'll put out more content in the future and everything will get better and now for the real thing Yumicon Battle Opera besides oh my god Andres and K Brad that I met you know I had a few conversations with I met Ricky Ortiz Justin Wong I met Filipino Champ I basically met all the pros and I have to say, Filipino champ isn't like an asshole like everyone thinks he is. I mean, sure, he used cheap tactics, but it, he wants to win. That's the whole point of winning a major, just winning and, you know, showing sportsmanship. The only reason why the people that actually hate Filipino champ is because the fact that they don't talk to him. They never had, like, a conversation with him. I had a conversation with them, especially with P.R. Barra. P.R. Barra is... He's cool. <laughs> and IFC Yikes, you can't hate IFC Yikes. If you hate IFC Yikes, then something must be wrong with you. I'm serious. The same thing with correlation of real Neanderthals or what you see right there. Yeah, I had to put down the real name, but in the majors, it's correlation of real Neanderthals instead of correlation of real niggas. <laughs> but besides that, better I was hype, even though I did get knocked off in Marvel. Yeah, I need to step my shit up. Anyway, the Skullgirls tournament, 
only a few people showed up with their matches, so they only did the top four on Shuriken, which was kind of suckish. But anyway, I already know who won, and I know Justin Wong was, you know, pretty good in there. I, I had to say, I signed up here because of the fact that I played like it was Marvel's Capcom 1. I don't own the game, but I do know how to play it. Especially since I made Skull, I mean, <laughs> especially since I made Parasaur and Max Fortune. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to get over this little head cold. That's why I have tea or coffee, whatever it's called. I just got some of it. Hold on. Yeah, it's coffee. <laughs> anyway, the matches that they had, especially for Marvel, was hype. IRC Yikes versus Ricky Ortiz, Noel Brown versus Corn, but work like most of the matches that they had over there was hype, especially. And yes, that is how Detroit acts at a major. We get hype over one round. We got the mentality a smooth fighter, and that and we will keep that mentality when we win. Whether it's you know first round, second round, we will pop off, just like everyone else do. But if you feel that it should be safe for the end of the match, that's your own thing. I'm not mad at that. You actually show some good sportsmanship. And during that, or after that, we went to the rave, like we did on Friday, but it was kind of boring. And we played like a couple of songs, so we decided to just go back to our hotel and just basically do where we went over there, which was playing a little bit of Second Tide Tournament 2. I still can't believe, <laughs> I had to tell you, Friday night, me and my friends were playing Mortal Kombat. I was on, I was on one of my other friends' team. The fact that all this, all that stuff we did after we lost a game, one of my friends just started talking a lot of trash about the characters, including Kratos and Quan Chi talking about. It's the Battle of the Ashes. <laughs> Saint Kitana, Saint Melina, and Jay, and all the other female ninjas who wear masks. I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah, they look good without their masks, but I bet you them Photoshop lips won't hide their ugliness. <laughs> talking about Cyrus is a Jamaican robot. <laughs> Man, it was just crazy. It's the same thing with, you know, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. He did the same thing for them. But <laughs> it was funny, but it was still fun. And for the third and final day, it wasn't really anything going on. We left our hotel room about 12. We started to stay for another three more hours to take, you know, some more pictures. So Julian or, you know, Julian from Just Gerald Media, I suggest you check him out. Link is in the description for his Facebook page and his website. Check him out. He's a really good photographer. He got some good pictures with some very good cosplays, and I even helped out, you know, picking out which costume or cosplay was better. It's a shame that I couldn't find Saishi though, <laughs> but I know my boy Gerald did. Shout out to him, by the way. And that was pretty much it. After that, we just went home. Sorry, did not. I apologize that I didn't put up like the, you know, this video up sooner, but after I put up the corn highlight, you know, that corn porn. I just fell asleep, like literally flat out, drool everything, but I'm getting ahead of myself. And that was pretty much it. Shout out to Just Your Media. You know, check him out. Daniel Wesley or Nedolicious, his DMR page is in there as well. Corn, Correlation of Real Neanderthals, their Facebook page right there. Let me see who else. Oh, yeah, that guy with the glasses, Doug Walker, Lynn Cara. Mystery Science Theater, Justin Wong, K. Brad, Filipino Champion, everyone else you know that I got to meet, you know, meet up and talk to. I'm Lizzie the Conquer, and you know, stay safe and drink this if you want to avoid, you know, colds, you know, tea, coffee, whatever. Just drink heavenly liquids if you want to get rid of sicknesses. I'm out and make sure you check out our Facebook page since we get more support. And in the long run, we will be pouring our new, you know, new four stuff to Story Arc Animation's YouTube page. But that's in the near future when we get more supporters. Okay? So I'm out. See y'all later.
Also, I forgot to mention, at the Yumicon, I seem to got myself a reputation for being one of the best Skull Girls players due to the fact that I really enjoyed the game. So, here's what I'm going to do. Right now, I'm trying to get in touch with the original artists of Skull Girls. I already got support from Aaron Fitzgerald, the voice of my favorite character from the game, Parasol, as <laughs> you can tell. And I actually want to get in contact with the original creator of the game. Not Mike, not just Mike C, but the other one. I forgot her name, but I know it's a female. And I actually want to see or do in the future a Skull Girls cartoon for either the web or hopefully a little something like Toonami or Anime News Network or something like that. You know, the game is good enough. I just hope it actually gets bigger when they patch this, especially since they're supposed to release character by character and stage by stage. I think that was one of the biggest turnoffs due to the fact that there wasn't enough content. But they still going at it, so I think you should actually support Mike C, Revenge Labs, and Autumn Games for actually making a good piece of artwork. Till then, this is Dizzy the Conquer, and I'm signing out this time.